Well, I'm still going through an amphetamine detox from and withdrawal from when I got exposed in my old apartment, and it's terrible. It's really awful. I can't believe how long it's lasting. I moved out about a week and a half ago. I'm still feeling really bad. It's um. I'm getting fatter too, making me hungry and puffy and stuff. Anyway, um, there's just been so many different stages, like, but a lot of things that come up are feeling really faint or feeling like I'm gonna black out. Um, and then for a while I was just like extraordinarily hungry, like I just had to eat all day and eat this huge amount of food. And then the past couple days I started being really tired. It feels like just being like a flat tire. Muffin around the middle of the day. I feel like I just have to go lie down. I can't stand up And I even feel tired when I'm lying down. I feel like I want to like go lie down, but I'm already lying down and Spent starting to get more withdrawal issues. I Think at first it was like a lot of toxic stuff coming out of me and now it's turning more into like Just I'm just down. I'm just kind of like Not really sad in, in like an inflammation way, but more just like irritable and have less impulse control and like I notice myself like wanting to scream and stuff or um, like I get very affected by sounds, I get very easily startled and my cat really bothers me a lot and she is not getting the message that I don't want her around me and I have to keep throwing her off the counter. I really need to get a spray bottle so I can convey that message better. Um, I oh, I don't know, I feel terrible and I'm, I'm just kind of slogging through stuff at work. Oh, I get stomach pains too and I get bloating and I get like... I just can't believe how much stuff is happening to me because any other time I've gone through this it's only taken a few days because I had moved out within a few days of it starting. So I don't know. Hopefully there will be some benefit to all of this that maybe I get back on, on juicing. Juicing is one. Juicing is highly detoxifying. I'm realizing, remembering, and maybe you know I'm, I'm having. I'm actually eating a little better than average because I'm putting more thought into it. So my skin has been a little firmer because of that, and I think my face is even a slightly different shape because I think my cheeks are firmer. It might just be puffier too. But anyway. I feel terrible and, you know, I'm sleeping with this person every night and I, I some nights I'm just irritable and feeling like I'm going to cry and stuff and I just keep being like, I'm really sorry to be going through this around you and, oh yeah, I've been having really bad chest pain too, I forgot to mention that, that's the main thing actually, if I think about anything stressful I get chest pain, so it's like, on top of everything else I have to make sure not to get stressed at all because then my heart will hurt. And I, I started taking CoQ10 for that. I'm taking B vitamins too, I think that's making the detox happen faster. Overall, it just makes me see that I need to put a lot more thought into detox. I, before this happened, I'd been thinking, oh, you know, I'm doing these ton of garbs and stuff, that'll be helping me detox. And I hadn't been doing much juicing or binders or detox specific herbs or milk thistle or anything, but I think I need to get back into that. So I'm back on milk thistle, taurine, um, B vitamins. I tried doing coffee enemas, but I started getting rib fracture issues. I, it just seems like I can't tolerate coffee enemas without getting fractures. Uh, there's been a number of times when I've gotten fractures when I had just started doing them again, or when I was doing them. And maybe because they deplete your minerals, or maybe I just can't handle the caffeine or something. But anyway, I feel terrible, fucking terrible. I have been craving like calming herbs. I never really do anything for my mood usually, because usually my mood's great, but I've been craving like passion flower or lemon balm or just kind of different herbs like that so I got some calming tea and I drink this ginkgo tea and stuff and I just hope I you know a lot of my friend groups are telling me that they they care about me and they'll be there when I feel better and stuff and I just hope people are still there to hang out with me when I'm feeling better and it's just like a hard hard thing to know what to do because it's like well I should probably not hang out with people when I don't feel good because I don't want to like ruin my reputation having them see me like this and also I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like hanging out with anybody that I'm not already close to right now. And then there's also like, well, you know, like, I don't want to be like really dependent on the people that I am close to and I don't 
want to like lose these other friend circles that I have and you know so I'm trying to just kind of like keep in touch on Facebook and just remind people yeah I'm still I still want to hang out eventually I just don't feel good now and you know just kind of let people know what I'm going through so that it makes sense why I'm not hanging out but um every now and then I feel like my strength coming back like I used to have before this happened like up until the first day that this all happened I just felt so bulletproof from all this health stuff I just felt so strong and I remember feeling like that even the first day as it happened and then after I got <laughs> it's just I've lost that feeling but every now and then I started to get it back this feeling of like hey even this hard shit I can get through it's gonna be okay and not in the sense of like pushing it down or not feeling it but just in the sense of like I know how to be strong I'm I know how to take tonic herbs, I know good practices to do for myself, I've been through worse things, um, in the sense that my body knows how to be resilient, and that honestly a lot of things are not a big deal, and don't have to be a huge deal, and I like when I have that feeling, and oftentimes when I feel good also I feel angry about other times when I didn't feel as good, I feel, I feel like, wow, like, why did I let myself be like that or why I feel angry that people saw me that way. It's usually a really good sign for me if I get so much better that I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm so embarrassed about the way I used to be because I'm having such higher standards for myself. So trying to get back to that and just trying to not embarrass myself too much in the process because it's pretty awful and I, it's been affecting my job. And it's crazy that just, you know, somebody using drugs two floors below me was able to have this massive impact on my life and I wish I could just I wish he knew I wish he knew what what he'd done to me and you know I it's fine if he wants to use drugs I just wish that he would inject them instead <laughs> or take them orally or something like that rather than smoking them um smoking meth is one of like the rudest possible things to do because it's so harmful to other people and I, I don't think he was just using that. I think he was also using some type of speed or something. So, and maybe something else too. There was something else that didn't really give me amphetamine effects. Um, anyway, the main thing is if I get through this without a heart attack, without damaging relationships that are important to me, and without losing my job, you know, then I will have been highly successful. I'm in a new apartment now that I honestly trust that I'll be able to stay in for a while. I hope. And I don't know what my life will be like after this. I think I'm going to have to focus more on improving myself after this. I think this has made me really kind of come inward and, and focus more on like a handful of close friendships rather than having this really active social life. And I think I'm going to probably keep doing that because between treatment and other things, like I just, I don't have a lot of time and I really need, like if I have my interpersonal needs met, you know, with my cat and a few friends and people I can cuddle with, then it's like, well, now it's time to focus on my career, I have this remit safety course I want to go through again, I have a Mark Manson course I'm going through, I like to, there's certain people I trust a lot and I like to read their materials because I feel like that saves me time and then I can go ahead and try to just be responsible. I started having a 401k because my company started offering that for the first time in a couple years, four years. So anyway, I just want to like get more secure and safe and be responsible and be financially responsible. Feel like I would know what I would do if anything happened to my job and everything like that. So that's my, kind of my next goal probably, it's just adult stuff, adulting and also trying to figure out how to have good relationships when I have, I don't like to, you know, I just, I don't think I'm going to get married, but I, I think I want a lot of the things that come, you would get with marriage, like stability and knowing that someone's going to be there and helping one another and stuff. And so I'm kind of trying to think through, and it's just, I mean, before I got Lyme disease, my person I was with wanted to marry me, and then we talked about it, and after I got Lyme, it's just been really hard to have anybody want to marry me unless they're like much worse off than I am and they're like, oh, well, and the people that I'm not sure that I would still want to be, be that entangled with if I happen to get better. 
And it's probably the same for them. Like, some people are like, well, I don't know if I want to be entangled with this person who might have these kinds of problems and stuff. And it's, it's a big question for me. How am I going to provide for my companionship needs and stuff as I get older? And, um, you know, like, can you do that without getting officially married? Can I still... How, how do I convince people to want to be with me long term? Um, you know, and I just find the underlying thing for jobs and relationships and everything for me is health. It's always the limiting factor for me. Has been for probably half of my life in a massive way. And so, you know, the better I can do with my health, the better all those things are. And I find this, you know, that I'm a lot more attractive to people the healthier I am and have a lot more options. And... You know, I do have some personal strength that I've gotten from what I've gone through that is is an asset that I offer and that people take people take use of, make use of that I'm involved with. But um, I I just want to be healthier, and it's been this has really been my first setback since getting a big improvement, and I'm just kind of trying to weigh like how big was the setback compared to the improvement and. Where am I going to be after the setback's over? I'm going to go tomorrow and get a UBBI for the first time in six weeks to help me fight the Lyme disease. And it seems like I can go a while without them now. Like It used to be I would get them every couple of days and then every few weeks and then every month. And now it seems like every six weeks I do it. So that helps. It keeps the cost down. I'll see how it goes. I'll probably fix quite a bit and need to detox. But I just I need to get it in. It's been too long. I don't want to wait so long that I... I think it's the kind of thing where you need to keep it up so that the effects from the last one are still there when you get the next one. Because if you wait too long, then it's like you're starting from scratch, I feel. So, gonna be um, going for that tomorrow and then probably trying to just spend the day alone and sleep it off afterward because it's probably not gonna be fun. But I love going for them because. After the UVBIs, I feel like my old self in a lot of ways. I feel sharper, smarter, funnier, and um, it feels like my brain is clearer. Anyway, so I'm just trying to get through everything and be as healthy as I can be.